again. Jesus H. Christ. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right. Hey, what's up, guys? Shadow Steel here, and um, let's start with our latest episode of Railwork Sundays. I really need to try and record this as best I can, and I'm doing a lot of new techniques right now. Um, for one, I have the audio game audio recording through my video recording program, and I have the the um, voice audio being recorded through a separate program. That way, I have two different audio clips. One of the game, one of the actual voice audio. So hopefully that works. So let's get started. Good morning, driver. We have a busy day ahead of us, so let's get, let's get moving. If you haven't noticed, we're returning back to Steam on the Quincy. And I'm... Oh, there we go. We, uh, we'll be collecting a few cars, to, quite a few cars, to bring over to the junction with the first set of, ca first set of cars sitting over at Cedar Mills. Okay. The brakes are running, and we're good. All right, there we go. I'm gonna turn this audio down on my headset so I can actually hear. Turn on the headlights. There we go. Start shoveling coal. Get the locomotive running. Over to the doors, open the doors. Alright. So, I this is a redo of the Steam on the Quincy scenario with a few changes here and there. So, for one, the actual scenario itself is a redesigned by myself. One I've redesigned, my, like one I've made myself. And, um,. This particular version features a lot more rolling stock that you'll see along the line. Some of which you probably won't see right off the bat. So I'm going to get out of the fucking map view first. And I proceed to choose some other weird view. Thank you very much. I can't find the 8 key at these points. So as we approach this little junction here, you'll probably want to check out over here. We have a few center beam flat cars that we don't actually pick up. But I do have some cars that are setting out in the siding here. If I zoom in, I wonder if I can actually spot my train. Another thing is that I've actually learned how to drive the scenario a little bit more. So for one, I am actually driving the train. I'm going to put on some brakes while I kind of keep my throttle up here. What the hell? Oh, here we are. Well, that was bad timing. So there's our, there's the cars, there's the train. Or there was the train. What the fuck? What? Did I lose it? There he is. There we go. Kind of a goofy little sight there. I do like that sight though. So if you haven't noticed, I put the brakes on a little bit because that's actually the way, the where I put it essentially is roughly about the point where it seems to allow the locomotive to move, especially on the one percent grades along the line, and yet it still allows the train to stop. So essentially, doing two things at once. So I'm dragging kind of my train along. But I've also got um, quite the collection there. Have you seen my head go up towards the front of the camera? That's usually because I'm trying to see something here. For example, I'm keeping an eye on the coal level. We're at 53% coal. I want to make sure I have some water in the boiler as well. We do have a passenger view in the caboose. So that's good. Any crew members in there? No, empty caboose. Okay, got an empty caboose today. <laughs> Keeping an eye on the map view here. What the? Fuck? 
That's fucking weird. I've never seen that before. <laughs> That's weird. I guess the map has been edited a little bit. I don't know why. Coming up to our first crossing. Let me go ahead and go out that little dog. We're not moving too fast, but once we get to the 1%, I think we'll speed up a little bit better. I don't like the fact that the speed limit is 20 miles an hour here, though. There we go, running past the crossing here. So if you haven't noticed, there's been a few changes made to the scenario I played originally and the scenario I'm playing now, the one I've created essentially. The one I created essentially adds a few new things, such as a caboose at the tail end of the train, new rolling stock and new scenery objects that don't are, are not actually present most of the time on a lot of other scenarios. Like the center beam flat cars weren't on the original scenario, he just had something sit. I don't think he had anything sitting there. I would have to double check. Meanwhile, as we approach our stopping point, I'm going to show off some of the cars here. So the last, the first car and the last car are from the West Feather River Canyon. The box car and the bulkhead flat car. The GP30 is used for some of the freight equipment as well. So I, li I would have, I do like the idea of using, the G what the fuck? I have to increase the regulator until I can get some more speed. I don't know why I'm slowing down so hard. Normally I would be able to handle this. Huh. That's weird. Ugh. Alright, 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 alright. Approaching our stopping point. getting weird. Normally I wouldn't be able to, wouldn't have any much, too much of an issue with this, but lately I've been having issues. Alright, come to a stop. What the fuck? Do I have a handbrake on or something? There's no way I should be stopping that quickly. Alright. Before we go any further, we need to drop off the caboose. Once we do, once that's done, hook up to the car sitting over at the siding. Also, make sure to set the handbrake. Handbrake set, release, and we're good to go. Now we gotta slowly make our way back. Flipping the switch. There's enough coal in there. There we go, we're good.
Well, at this rate, I'm gonna need to start putting on the blower. I don't know why I'm not able to move as much. What if they patch that a little bit? Should be able to run with the brakes on. Perhaps I have the brakes on too much. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to release the brakes just a tad. Why is the... Wait a minute, hold on. Oh, okay, never mind. Alrighty, so we got the train moving again. I guess I just had the brakes on too heavily. Switch. Going over to the cars. Double check. Keep an eye on the speed here. You don't want to go too fast. So one thing I did was um, actually in, enable fail instructions if you ran into the cars too heavily, derailed them or something like that. Level grade again. From safeties. go we stop short that's good we don't need to move too fast into these cars wait a little bit oh I can actually hook them up for some reason no way I can hook them up from here though come on there we go we're moving On. Just make it. Come on. There we go. Alrighty. Now, now that we've collected our cars, let's recollect our caboose. All right. Let's move. Sitting reverse forward. That's be good. Let's move. Such a beautiful sight, to be honest. I love this. We need to go back to the reverse point and head backwards to collect our caboose. But after that, we should be good. Looks like something cold and getting water in the boiler. Here are the brakes wheeling on these cars, though. I feel like there should be a... Oh, nope. There we go, running over the switch now.
quyết water enough setting reverser we're good to go I think our train jolted backwards as we pulled to a stop. That's enough coal in the fire. We're good. All right, let's pick up our caboose and we should be good to go. I want to get a good screenshot, a uh, uh, image of the locomotive as it departs. It's coming right for us! Is it? <laughs> Uh, we're easing out over door. All right, we can start slowing down our speed. Easy does it. Easy does it. Still use some speed here as we approach. Oh god, there goes the car. I've noticed that a lot lately, that the cars bounce a, a bounce just a tad when you start to approach them for coupling. That's really weird. I might separate that just a little bit to show you guys what exactly happens with these cars. But it's really awkward for the most part. It makes you feel like the cars are just going to start flying up in the air. Got it. Not that bad, actually. All right. We're moving backwards now. <laughs> Alright, that's pretty good. Drain the wall drain the water out of the cylinders. I got the local one is just sitting on the switch here. Come on. There we go. Once we get her up to speed, I'll go ahead and get a good screenshot. Got another whistle post up here. We can probably use that. <laughs> there we go, crossing. Oh, whistle post, but eh, whatever. Woof! Let's keep her moving, boys. Let's keep her moving. Ah, oh, gah! <laughs> I'm also keeping. I'm probably gonna split this up into two parts. This episode for Railwork Sundays is going to be featured for Railwork Sundays this week. But the next part is going to be featured on Trackside. So you guys, if you're interested, keep an eye out for the Trackside episode that features the Return to Quincy. Uh, for for the Steam, the Steam Returns to the Quincy episode. I need to keep an eye on the Steam locomotive. I don't know how fast he's going. Alright, just see. There she goes. It looks like she's slipping a little bit. I do like the tiny wheels. I do love those. Makes me feel like she would be a good narrow gauge engine, actually. Let's 
speeding up, honestly. Alright, ugh. You're not wasting too much water, honestly. I'm checking the map a little bit. I'm so confused on the line there. What did I do? Uh, hmm. Interesting. Normally you don't see that. I wonder if it's been like that for the last couple episodes. Last last couple of recordings. Hello, locomotive. Ow! <laughs> She's moving slowly, but that's not bad. I want to keep her at a steady pace. I don't want to run at like full speed for the entire run. I'm going to stop there, and this is what we're going to do. We're going to get a good screenshot of the locomotive right up at close and personal. You see, what I'm trying to do here is essentially get a... Um, I do like doing this, so apparently I've learned recently that the locomotive, like the... That, um... That um, if you press the pause key on the keyboard, you actually pause the game, which is kind of cool because it allows you to get screenshots like this while, um, you know, allowing for the locomotive, you know, allowing you to continue with the scenario. Let me do this side as well. You know, this design does remind me of the Western Maryland. I wonder if that's... Yeah, I wonder if this was based off the Western Maryland design. Because, um... 734 has a similar look. Whee! Pause and break. What the fuck? I'm keeping a close eye on my speed there. If I go anything below what I want to be going at, it's not going to be easy. Okay, we're getting speed a little bit. We're going to be at 14 miles an hour as we approach this. we got some more cars setting over here on the siding. I'll start lowering a, a regulator there. Got some more cars sitting over here. The Union Pacific GP30, SP45, so on and so forth are sitting here nicely. Alright, turning off the locomotive steam. Let me go ahead and start... Uh, you know what, leave the... I'll start putting water in the boiler a little bit though. No, I'll let it stop. I just need to pull the train just a bit more forward. Oh god, I can't fucking use the camera. Alright, once again we have to drop off the cars behind us before we can move on. Just make sure you set the handbrakes. I also need to move the car, the locomotive forward because the entire contest is not sitting on the point where I need to drop it off at. So, what I'm going to do is what, I, what, I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop off, pull forward until the caboose is on the waypoint, and then I'm going to drop off the cars while setting the handbrakes, of course. That was always a pet peeve of mine of other players because they don't tend to set the handbrakes um, very often for um, such a run because they break and then drop off the cars on a downhill grade. The train's just gonna, the car's just gonna move, like, fly down the line. 
Yawn. Yeah, we're there. Okay, pull the train stop. Right, with that done, I'm going to set the handbrake on the rear car and the four, first car. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead, go over here, look at the coupler, uh, pull the locomotive, and then unhook. Uh, there we go. All right, let's hook up the next set of cars. That's a little trick I learned not too long ago that you can actually unhook the cars while um running a train around. Go ahead and remove, uh, turn off the cylinders, apply or get some coal in the fire. I know that I'm getting the safeties coming off every so often, but it's always worth it. Alright, break. It does seem look it does look like she's slipping. I also can tell that the safeties are fl flaring. Where, where are the safety valves? Where are they? Are they at the same stuff the whistle is? Weird. I've never, I never bothered looking for the safety valves on this locomotive. Is that where they're supposed to be? Is that the pop offs? No. Hmm. Interesting. Can't tell where the safety valves are. Oh well. Thing in reverse. Stop with the coal. Turn the lights on the other direction. Sound the bell. And then... Off we go! Also want to double check the water in the boiler. Sorry if my hair is in the fucking screen, I can't see yet. Ah! I swear. One of the good things about doing the dual audio like this is that I can have the game audio at full volume for once and then from there I can just simply just adjust the audio in post-production and then, you know, from there just, you know, keep everything simple. Oh my god! Holy Christ! I was moving it. That would have been dangerous. I was going 15 fucking miles an hour down there. <laughs> Jesus! Holy Christ! I am not doing that again. I'm going to be extra careful with that run. There's the car jump again! Safety's going off though. What the? Uh, as you can see, there's no coupler. And then, bam, coupler. No coupler. Coupler. No coupler. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Jesus! Now we have some more cars to pick up before we re collect our cars. Le we left. Head over to the Quincy Mill siding where we will get a few more cars. Okay.
Off we go. Alrighty, well, here we go. There we go. That's such the best shot. I'm getting like a ton of images right now. I don't know why. Photo op! Yeah. I'm just gonna need to pull up the brakes here. Yeah, the safety's gone off quite a bit. Oh, I do need to go over to the switch there, though. I'm going to flip that before we move any further. Get away, too, get away from it too much. Those safety valves keep popping. Now. Going over here to this crossing here. This is actually where I took the last like little screenshot there. Going down the train. C and O. See if he's going off again. It's always nice to see a few East Coast visitors now and then. Now that was one hell of a view. Maybe one of these shots I'll go ahead and grab that. I'll grab that shot without the um, two trains running by, but eh. All you need to do is get past the switch. Uh, Alright, sign up the plot and stop the brain and stop the train. Stop the train. The fuck just happened? The train just automatically had the switch flip there. We're good. The fuck? That's weird. Hmm. Right, we're stopping. Let me go over here for a second. And then I'm going to hook up the... Um, I'm going to put this switch there. There we go. We're good. Now the line should be set for us to go around. What the hell? Where are we? Where are we at? Oh, there we go. Now we should be able to hook up the cars. Now, if you haven't noticed, a lot of the cars that we have right now, they are currently uh, some of the cars here are from various East Coast routes, which is why the line is always not good. Nice to see some East Coast visitors now and then. Uh, this is from the Baltimore and Ohio route. Baltimore and Ohio Kingswood branch, I think it's called. I believe this is also from the Kingswood branch. It's supposed to be a New York Central car, if I'm remembering this correctly. But for some reason, the logo was removed for the the B and O or the uh, the New York Central, which is odd 
because the train it's uh, because the New York Central is owned by Norfolk Southern, which has never really had too much of an issue with the uh, licensing of their products. And then you have the New Haven line down here, which I thought I'm remembering that correctly. That's probably owned by CSX for the most part. I'm not exactly sure because I've not seen any other. Uh, I have not seen the cars. I've not exactly seen the um, cars, for the most part, used, like the logos and whatnot, used for the other content. But it might be actually owned by the company that has, of course, been notorious, as of recently, of removing their products or licenses off Train Sim. And that's actually from this car here. This car is from the Bolt... Um, the Boston and Maine route. However, because the Boston and Maine eventually removed all their licensing products, because they're part of Pan Am. Part of Pan Am, Pan American Airways. And for some reason, they were also the ones that owned uh, the Portland Terminal route, that which got removed. I thought that was a BNSF route for the longest time, but that route um, was removed. Okay, now we can collect the rest of our contest back over at the Quincy Mills. And, um, so the Pan, Am Pan American Airways, uh, recently returned, or I guess has been operating railroad, uh, steam uh, railroad, con uh, subsidies for a while, which, in my opinion, is kind of weird. I always thought of them as the air, 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 airline Pan Am, Pan Am Airways. But apparently they also had a small railroading business, which is weird. For the most part, I've never heard of that. Let's go over here and make sure I'm all clear and switch here. Flip the switch. There she goes. And all that's going, I'm going to put some water in the boiler, kind of put some coals in the fire, and we're going to be good. There's a school bus. Beep, beep. I think this is set in autumn. I don't know. I might have to change that, though. Right on the magic school bus. Okay, anyway, back to my original points. Jesus Christ. Um, so, Pan, Pan Am has been notorious recently of removing their products off scene, uh, you know, licensed products from their simulators. So, um, a handful of products that had that licensing was removed, including the Portland Terminal route, which I've not really heard from lately in terms of what's going on with that or anything. But from what I've heard, it's not just a simple licensing issue. There's something else to do with the roots. And that's actually kind of a common issue that's been happening really recently. If I remember right, there was also the issue with um, the original classic Northeast Corridor. It was removed off steam, but it turned out it was a sort of re revamp of the route. That they were, wor like, like they were repairing a few bugs and things off the route. That they decided, well, we're going to have to remove this temporarily to keep people from buying it in a par pretty much broken state. And that led to the route being completely removed off seam and then returning eventually later. And, um, but Portland Terminal was more of a case of licensing issues from what I've heard because it's a third party route. It was released by G-Trax. And for some reason, the Boston and Maine like stuff was pretty much all but removed. I have not seen a single, and I mean single, product of the Boston and Maine re-released on here. In fact, all Boston and Maine content has been removed, which leads me to believe that this was a lic major licensing issue for the most part, but could be something more. There could be something going on with the roots, because a lot of the reskins that were using the 44 tonner, the Boston and Maine 44 tonner, were, were actually changed to be standalone repaints. Because there were some 44 tonners that were released through the Portland Terminal routes that used the 44 tonner, and then they had to just be removed and re redone so they would be standalone for the most part. And um, yeah, that was kind of weird to see that, but um, as we get close to ending part one, because this is going to be part one, I don't see very much of a use to continue this route or run at this point because there's actually a big issue in terms of just length. 
Uh, the original video became an hour long because of uh, just the entire length of the video. Oh dear God, I'm going to hit this hard. Jesus! <laughs> I rammed it hard. Now let's head to the junction. Now let's make our way to the junction. Oh my God. Gotta open up the cylinder cracks. We got we got a hundred and two water for under pursuit. We got the boiler overfilled. And naturally, with this, I'm gonna end the episode. So like and comment down below. Subscribe if you guys want more. Make sure to check out Trackside where we make our way back to Quincy Junction. Take care, everyone.